I think the, the key um, issue in this last year's set of results is that once again, because of the decline in the South African manufacturing environment, we've, we've suffered a, a loss of volumes. And obviously when you have a loss of volumes, irrespective of how much you might be able to put your prices up to recover your underlying costs, means that your revenue is relatively flat. Um, so this year, we, we, our, our revenue year on year was, was flat. And we had to compensate by that through cost management. And our costs went up by, by under 3%, which I think against the current um, inflationary environment is, is pretty, pretty good uh, work. But the impact of that is overall our EBITDA came down 7%. So it, it was a disappointing year in that you know, the strikes, uh, the lack of confidence, the lack of investment in major sectors of the economy all translated to us into subdued and reduced volume levels. Uh, which then translated into a flat top line and therefore despite good cost management uh, we had to report a 7% EBITDA reduction. But having said that obviously we, we've been sort of in a range bound EBITDA for, for the last few years and what we've recognised that we can't continue to just practice cost management to help to improve the results that what we really needed to do was go through some form of restructuring. And therefore, to facilitate the restructuring, and based on the, the modern accounting standards, we made some, some fairly significant provisions, which also impacted our results. So we put through 185 million in terms of, of uh, provision, which uh, covers two aspects. One, the potential future um, loss of staff that we're going to have as a consequence of our restructuring. And secondly, the accounting, sorry, the uh, support from our consultants uh, for going through this restructuring process. And then secondly, we, we wrote off uh, nearly 53 million in terms of impairments, recognising that through our restructuring process, we were going to um, potentially not utilise certain assets in the future. So those two combined with the 7% reduction in EBITDA resulted in headline earnings and, uh, and earnings per share reducing substantially. But it's really the nature of the once-off charges which has really caused uh, the, the headline earnings and the earnings per share to drop. Taking those out, Given the fact that South Africa Inc. was in a, in a, a very much a low growth, negative growth from a manufacturing, industrial, mining uh, perspective, I'm actually quite comfortable with the level of cost management that we had. Disappointing, but, but, but I don't think there was too much else we could have done about it. I think the issue is that from our perspective at any rate, we are not pursuing any major growth in South Africa until certain attributes start to come about. Business confidence needs to be rebuilt. People need to start, or companies need to start spending the cash piles that they've been developing and making the investments. A gas company supplies derived demand. Nobody wakes up in the morning, generally speaking, and says, I'd like to go and buy a cylinder of oxygen. Um, but, but it's all about what our product's used for. And therefore, we have supply derived demand, and therefore our customer has, has to have good growth for us to be able to benefit from that and sell more to them. So in the foreseeable future, we see a fairly subdued output. Um, I think that's in line with what most of the economists are saying. I think if you look at energy utilization, which is a key indicator for us, because a lot of the processes which we sell into, uh, in essence, are, are, are dependent on, on, on electricity. And you can see from the decline in energy consumption that, that the economy has slipped backwards from a manufacturing perspective and we see that carrying on for some time. Again, uh, we were very excited because of all the oil and gas fines, but, but because of commodity prices, uh, which are now at, not, I wouldn't say all-time lows, but in terms of the normal cycle seem to be at the bottom from a pricing perspective, you're finding that there isn't as much, uh, there may be as much develop or, 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 of um, exploration going on, but the actual development of the fines has slowed right down and that's who we sell into because our products are for establishment, our, our products for infrastructure, and, and our products basically go into fabrication. All things that are necessary when you have growth projects are being brought to bear. Um, so the fact that, that commodity cycles are at their, at their lowest, or well, pricing is very low, and the fact that oil and gas in terms of pricing has come off means that the development of, of the fines is likely to slow down. So we see a slowdown in some of the economies, uh, other than perhaps areas like food and beverages. I think there, you know, the movement of, pe of people into uh, urban locations, the improvement of what they have in their pocket, all translates into greater use of or, or consumption of things like Coca-Cola, uh, which in turn means lots of CO2 being consumed. So we see good growth there, but for the rest we see 
moderate growth and moderated growth perhaps relative to what we would have seen a few years ago. But our stated objective remains the same. We would like to see over uh, the next three to four to five years that Sub-Saharan Africa's percentage of revenue of the AFROX group moves from about the 20% that it is today up to 40%. So we still see that happening, but perhaps the timescale for it to happen in is now slightly longer given the developments in commodities and oil and gas.